we never had just a single film to go across the whole nation, you know, on all the PBS stations. But we liked for this one too. So that's another possibility, but it'd probably be a year away we would it ever get on the whole PBS network, not just KET. Mm -hmm. But we were on track of that. Um, That'd be really good for you all to, yeah, to have done that. Does. We rolling? Okay, maybe we should just go with the, your work history. Well, when I first got out of high school, I started to work at a hospital as a nurse aide. And at that time, they were paying like $1.65 an hour. And it was a constant thing of being on your feet, on the go, very demanding. And I come home from work exhausted. So hospital work is real hard. I, I know from all the people that's done it. Now, were you ever, did you ever work as a waitress or a clerk in a store or anything like that? I worked for a lumber company. Um, I did that for a short time. It was a temporary job. Um, I was mostly a sales clerk. And then I did a lot of inventory work for them and I did some payroll. And that job paid $50 a week. So, and then by the time I got cut for my taxes, I was bringing home something like about $37 a week and carrying buckets of paint, boxes of nails, hardware. And that wasn't an easy job either. And then from that, I had a job in sales for a company that does home improvement, a uh, siding company. And I did a lot of travel. I'd go from town to town. And that year, I think I put something like about 96,000 miles on my car. I was clearing about, on a good week, if I had real good sales, I might clear $160. And then my children never knew where I was going to be. And when the weather got bad, I was always out on the road, working outside sometimes when the wind chill factor was 30 below zero. And then from that, after I left that job, uh, that's when me and my husband got a divorce. And from that point, uh, the company that that I had sold siding for moved away, and there was nothing else that a person could do except work in the coal mines or try to get a job as a secretary. And I had gone to vocational school for that and taken business in office, so I was trained as a secretary and had taken shorthand and key punch, but there's no turnover with people who have jobs as secretaries, they usually keep them around here because jobs are so hard to find. So when I saw that I couldn't get a job as a secretary, I heard that there was a class opening at the vocational school of Whitesburg, 48 hour inexperienced minor class. And I went and signed up for it. Sandra Bailey was the instructor and it was her very first class that she ever taught. So. When I started taking that class, just in the first few days it went by, it just, uh, it was just as though it's something I'd always done. Because from the time I was a little girl, Dad would come home from work, draw out little diagrams on the table, and tell me the things he had done in the mines that day and he just sort of painted me a picture of what it was like and I was always interested in it. So the things that I started seeing films about at vocational school, the things that I was learning were all things that my dad had told me about before and it was adding up, it was making sense to me. And for the first time I felt comfortable in something I was doing. I felt like I had come home.
out of all those jobs I'd ever had, I felt like I was home. So I told Sandy one day, I said, I'd like to make a career out of this. I'd like to go back to school and take mining technology. And of course that really pleased her that she had inspired me that much. So one day I left vocational school, went straight to Pikeville and signed up for their mining technology class. And I started in school in January. It was a two year course that you get an Associate of Applied Science degree. And I went, I started in in January and I completed the course in a year and a half. So as part of the program, you had to do a 12-week summer internship at a coal company. So through the career advisor at the school, um, through, their, through his cooperation and the cooperation of the coal companies, they tried to place the mining technology students. So I was fortunate enough to get a job at Republic Steel in Elkhorn City. And I worked there from two days after I got out of school for the summer until the day before I went back for the fall term. And it was there that they had me working in all different departments. They had started me out in engineering and I would do outside surveying work and I would go underground with the engineers and help set spads and then I worked with the dust samplers and I worked with the assistant safety director. We'd go around making inspections and he taught me an awful lot about safety. And, and were you ever <coughs> general inside during that summer? Were you as part of the, As part of that, uh, well I was a company, I was company person. Um, it was a UMWA mine. And they had people laid off at the time and that's the only way that they would hire a person for the summer is to be company. So I didn't have to do it and nobody told me I had to do it, but I did a lot of general inside work uh, as far as uh, helping to hang curtains and then um, they let me run some equipment, which well, I have already run everything that they, every piece of mining equipment on a continuous section. I'm not certified on it, but I've run it. And I worked some in the supply house, and it just gave me a, a well-rounded view of what it was like. So most of the kids that got jobs for the summer ended up shoveling belt lines all summer. But I count myself lucky because the company really was interested in seeing that I did learn. And they wanted me to be successful at it. So were you the only woman at the time? I was the only woman there. And there were times when it was real hard on me. Like the second day I was there, um, I was with the engineers and we were doing some outside surveying up in a place called Morgan's Creek and our Jeep broke down. And we had to walk 12 miles over terrain so rugged that a four wheel drive even had a tough time. And I walked 12 miles back, it took us four hours. And they told me, the engineers told me, said, um, well, looks like we're going to have to walk. And if we get started walking now, we might make it by the end of the shift. And they said, you can stay here if you want to, but we won't promise anybody will be back after you today. So <laughs> I didn't really have any choice. I had to start walking. Then when we set spads, that was my first night underground. You watched the roof fall in. That was uh, Thursday of the first week I started there. Yeah, it, it, on purpose it fell in or this was an accident? This was on the evening shift. Uh, 
um, we, it was like between shifts and we were going to go in and set spads before the crew got up to the face and it was a break away and we heard it falling. To me it sounded like thunder because I had never been underground before and didn't know what it was supposed to sound like. And we had about 39 inch coal and I watched them, their eyes kept getting bigger and bigger and I didn't know whether to run or to sit there. And so I watched them to see what they were going to do first. And they took off running and I knew I'd better follow. So then it quit falling and we walked back and it fell just a little bit more but we stood a break away and watched it fall. So that was a real experience. <laughs> first time underground, see a fall in. But we had, uh, with a 39 inch coal, it was, we had a lot of water in it too, so there were some places that I would go where water would be up over my boots and go down in my rubber boots. Well, did, uh, so that program, how long did it last and what did you do after the summer program? Well, after the summer program, then I went back to school to finish and uh, I had to carry 32 hours the last semester of my second year to have enough in to graduate with the rest of my class that I started out with. But in the meantime, like when we'd be out on uh, Christmas break or something, and they would offer an extra class like instructor's training through MSHAW, I took the instructor's course that lasted for a week. I gave up my Christmas break and took that class. And I was the only one in my class that did it, and now I'm glad I did. Then from that, I became a CPR instructor. And then when school was out, I had offers from three coal companies and the Institute of Mines and Minerals Research. I was offered a job by Island Creek and one by National Mines, and then one by Scotia. So, I took the one at Scotia because it was closer home, paid more money, had better benefits, and I started out as a dust sampler. And while I was there, I went to school and became an impoundment inspector and instructor. Then I went to school for dust sampling and maintenance and calibration of dust pumps. Then I took a class, a shop fires class, with the Department of Mines and Minerals and got my shop fires certificate. And so. And now, what's your pre present position and what, who do you work for and that kind of stuff? Are you going to say that? Well, they. I didn't tell you that I still did some training other than dust sampling while I was at Scotia underground. But And then I applied for a job at Chaparral and I had applied two years before when I had just first completed my 48 hour course and at that time um, they had no women working there. They would not hire anybody without experience. So I went back and renewed my application. And when I went back to renew it, um, I took a new updated resume of all my qualifications and talked to the superintendent and the personnel director. And they just so happened, there, as luck would have it, there had been a, the safety inspector that they had had decided to take a job as a section foreman. So they had an opening as a safety inspector. And I had all of the things that a safety inspector would have to have and all the kinds of experiences that a safety inspector would be expected to have. And I had eight months mining experience which made me a person with experience. And so they didn't have a female. There I was, finally at the right place at the right time.
with the company I'd always wanted to work for anyway. I'd heard such nice things about them, and it was a company that was growing, and a company that was very safety conscious, and a company where I felt like that I had a future, and that I could really go places. So I went on a Friday, and they called me on a Tuesday. I went that Wednesday morning for an interview, and by 11.30, <laughs> I had taken my physical and had signed up, and on Thursday, I started my first day's work. That was October the 30th. So, that, uh, are we? about, well, I'm talking too much, aren't I? No. 